It's Tuesday, August 6, 2019, and this is Globespan 24-7 News. My name is Samuel Signandon, coming to you live from Georgetown, Guyana. Here are the major headlines for today. Despite some progress, the GCOM immunerator is still receiving threats. Government says no evidence of trafficking and smuggling of Haitians. Seven-year-old Monrico girl sustained severe burns in critical state. Economist says general economy of Guyana stagnated and Yawa Cabra Ute gets spanking new community center. We start off tonight's news by telling you that a seven-year-old girl is now in a critical state at hospital after she sustained second and third degree burns on 97.8% of her body on Sunday morning at Mon Repose on the east coast of Demerara. Reports are that Sh Cheyenne Persaud was sleeping with her when her home, sorry, caught fire at around one hour Sunday morning. Her, her two brothers, ages 13 and 9, managed to escape but left her behind. Relatives said the girl related to them that she felt her feet burning, which led her to jump off her bed. She could not see where she was going, but remembered walking through the blaze in an effort to escape. Globespan 24-7 News was told that the child's mother was at a wedding house in the same community at the time of the incident. The father had been at sea, had been on sea for the past four months. However, after hearing the news, he returned today. Despite efforts by the Ghana police force to support field staff of the Ghana Elections Commission, reports of a verbal assault continue to escalate in light of the house-to-house -house registration exercise, with the most recent incident being a robbery on the arms. More details in this report. If persons are not registering, they would say they're not registering. Um, but it is, it is not, what we do not want is the violence against and the attack mm -hmm. on immigrants who are, who are conducting um, the exercise in the field. GCAM Public Relations Officer Yolanda Ward. Ward explained that the Commission has received police support to the best of their abilities and the robbery was the first violent assault committed on field staff, which has seen the perpetrator being detained. Other attacks by animals and verbal assaults have since been reported to the authorities. She added, there are almost 1,400 teams dispatched for the house-to-house -house registration countrywide exercise. We have assistance from the police. Uh -huh. What you need to be mindful of is that we have um, almost 1,400 teams out in the field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's practically impossible for us to have a police officer with every single team. Previously, GCOM released a statement on July 31 saying they have received several reports of threats and intimidation of their field staff. Consequentially, they engaged the Ghana Police Force to provide surveillance in communities and to assist with the security of the field staff. The Commission has also urged citizens to desist immediately from these unlawful and obscene acts as they will be arrested and prosecuted to the full extent of the law. It reminds that registration is a legal requirement and every citizen has a responsibility to ensure they get registered. For Globespan 24-7 News, Kippany Jordan. Thanks, Kippany. Newly appointed chairperson of the Ghana Elections Commission, GCAM retired Justice Claudette Singh, has set a date to meet with all appointed commissioners. This meeting is scheduled to take place on Thursday, August 15, 2019, one day after the scheduled ruling on the House to House registration challenge, which is expected in the High Court. This meeting will be the first for the new chairperson and commissioners since her appointment. The GCAM chair, had met with separate teams of commissioners. The only agenda for the meeting is the way forward in holding general and regional elections. Singh was appointed as GCOM chair on July 29, but began working officially on July 30. In light of recent media reports regarding the high influx of Haitian nationals entering Ghana for the purpose of trafficking and smuggling, Citizenship Minister Winston Felix has condemned this outrightly. He pointed out that the Ghana police force has made checks and to date has found no evidence to indicate even a single instance of people smuggling or trafficking relative to these Haitian travelers. Open quote. No one would deny that Haitians are one 
of the higher numbers arriving in Guyana from around the Caribbean. But the records produced by the two media entities are grossly incorrect and cannot be trusted to guide the public as to what is really taking place, end quote, Minister Felix said. One entity claimed that 8,602 Haitians arrived in Ghana between January of 2019 and July 2019 and only 13 have departed. Instead, Felix said during the same period, 8,476 Haitians arrived in Guyana and 1,170 departed the country. 48 were refused leave on landing. According to him, the media reports allege that Haitians are victims of trafficking and that there are level of collusion to have them registered to vote at the upcoming elections. However, he views this as a senator agenda afoot, which is aimed at using the arrival of Haitians in Guyana for political mileage through falsified information to deceive and sow seeds of discord among Guyanese. He also described it as xenophobic, noting that several other nationalities have traveled to Ghana, but would never target it like the Haitians. Attorney General Basil Williams has said if the Ghana Elections Commission declares that it will be prepared for an election on or before September 18, 2019, the government would be willing to abide by the commission's decision and move ahead with the elections process. The Attorney General made this statement during a panel discussion on the implications of the Caribbean Court of Justice's ruling on the business climate in Ghana. The event was hosted by the American Chamber of Commerce, AmCham, at the Marriott Hotel, Kingston, Georgetown, yesterday. I think the president is on record of saying that it is GCOM to determine the readiness of elections in Ghana, not the president, not the government. So once GCOM determines its readiness, we go to go. So yes. yes, we go to go. We have said that all the time. You know, we go to go. We're very confident in these elections. Of we have done good work, we will ask the people to allow us to finish the work. Meanwhile, during the three-hour-long discussion, opposition member of parliament Anil Nandlal spoke about how the current political situation has started to affect the economy negatively. The state of Guyana is precariously perched on the precipice of a constitutional crisis. After September the 18th, the government will lose its constitutional right to govern and Guyana will become no longer under constitutional rule, but under tyrannical rule. This will sound the death knell of the rule of law. Logically, the economic and social progress which the rule of law guarantees will certainly dissipate. The downward slide has already begun. The Attorney General, however, had a different opinion on the matter. Let's take a look. Ghana is the fastest growing of five fastest growing countries in the world, our economy. And we are not saying that as a government. You know who said that. And so all of this doom, they sayings that we, and utterances that we have in about our government, I don't know where it's coming from. But you cannot be the fastest growing economy in the world and you're saying that there's a downturn in our economy. All of the business that is being given out in connection with oil and gas, all that spending is impacting the economy. And therefore, it's fallacious to allege that there's a, a downturn in business. On the other hand, former House Speaker and prominent attorney Ralph Ramkran said that the political climate has a lot to do with how business transactions and deals are met. Do you seriously think that a major company like ExxonMobil or one of the others or its partners will seriously want to promote business or engage in business? And this is billions of US dollars we're talking about in a country that has a government that is unconstitutional, that's not supposed to be in office, or that has legitimate questions as to its status and its stability. Don't you think that ExxonMobil will want to hold back? 
And if Exxon Mobil holds back, don't you believe that that will do enormous damage and harm to our economy, not only in its growth, but it's in, in its international stature? Commerce, we were in great jeopardy if this government does not call elections. That event was broadcasted live via our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Outspoken economist Raman Gaskin has described the current state of the economy in Ghana as stagnated, explaining that nothing major is happening except for the oil and gas sector. Gaskin, a former presidential advisor, feels that the current political climate is the main contributing factor towards that development. He said unless that is fixed, things could only worsen. Right now, I said, um the, the, the word to describe the general economy of Guyana is stagnation. It's stagnating. Nothing in happening. Nothing in happening. Um, that would be the right word to describe the present um, state of the economy, except in the, in the case of oil and gas. A lot of things happening out there with ExxonMobil and the other oil companies. They're preparing and they want to drill and a lot of companies are coming into the country to offer uh, ancillary services and so on. That's going on. But outside of that, nothing else is going on. Uh, sugar is in a bad shape. I think this year we'll do about 100,000 tons. Um, the government haven't closed the four estates. And um, this PNC government, of course, preparing to close the other three. If they get a chance next year, they close them all. They don't, they don't want to have any that industry around them anymore. And there's a general um, stagnation in the place. There's nothing happening. Gaskin told Globespan 24-7 News that he believes that there is still high unemployment in the country as well. Although the government is trying to make work for youth with some youth core and some cadet core and this core and the other core, which is a PNC thing which Bonham used to have, Granger's doing all that. Yesterday they, they had a marching of 500 people from some cadet core and they like all that nonsense. Bring all the youth, put them in something, dress them up in a uniform and start march. That, that's what Mr. Granger is good at, he's doing it, and to that extent he's a very faithful follower of Burnham. Burnham had the, the army, the people's militia, and this corps, and the youth corps, and this corps, Mr. Granger doing that, he's good at that. In the meanwhile, he sent home over 10,000 uh, uh, workers in the sugar industry. Many of them are still having a lot of difficulties. The Ghana Power and Light Inc. is working to restore power in areas across Region 4 that are currently without electricity. Director of Operations Barrett Harjohn told the Department of Public Information that due to heavy rainfall in the wee hours of this morning, three circuits tripped resulted in service interruptions in a number of areas in Georgetown on the East Coast and East Bank of Jamarara. The affected areas include Georgetown, Prashad Nagar, Kitty, Camberville, Sabrineville, Newtown, Queenstown, Albertown, Bel Air, South Rhinevelt, Festival City, North Rhinevelt, Guy Hawk Gardens, Roxon, Bornham Gardens, Stevedore, Tocqueville, Lamaha Park, and PPQQC Scheme, East Coast Demerara, South Sophia to Success, and East Bank Demerara, as well as Nandi Park to Hope. Yawakabra on the Suzaik Linden Highway is the latest village to receive a new community centre. More in this report. The construction project is a partnership between the Guyana government and the United States military through its New Horizon Guyana mission. At a cost of 188 billion Guyana dollars, four centres of this nature has been constructed at Amelia's Ward, Blueberry Hill and a women's shelter which is to be commissioned in Linden. Our proposal if uh, finds favor with the NDC and the government of Guyana is to establish these centers as a living being in itself, as a corporate entity, a corporate body uh, with its own uh, <clears throat> with its own board of directors and board of management. And I suspect when the board of directors and board of management will have representatives from all the respective communities. Technical Coordinator, Community Development Council, with the Communities Ministry, Eugene Gilbert. 
At the Hanenova ceremony, Gilbert spoke on behalf of the government and lauded the U.S. military for a successful partnership between the governments for the development of the country. This initiative by government relates to the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, Sustainable Development Goal, SDG 11, for sustainable cities and communities. Yaro Cabra in the Suzdek Linden Highway is the latest village to receive a new community center for much benefit to the development of youths and the community as a whole. For Globespan 24-7 News, Kippany Jordan. Thanks, Kippany. President David Granger this morning said Forbes Burnham, Guyana's first prime minister and executive president and founder of the People's National Congress, will forever be remembered for his peerless contribution to national development, particularly in the field of education. The head of state was at the time speaking at the commemoration of the 34th death anniversary of the former president at the Crypt Place of Heroes Botanical Gardens. He noted that the former president reinforced the basis of universal primary and secondary education and moved tertiary education from being the privilege of an elite few to an entitlement for everyone. He augmented overall attendance and school enrollment and built new primary and secondary schools, including the first residential schools for indigenous children at St. Ignatius in the Rupununi. Open quote. He built modern multilateral schools on a regional basis in the Pomeroon Supernam at Anna Regina, Demarara Mahaika, Mahaika Burbies, East Burbies Quarantine, and at New Amsterdam and Upper Demarara Burbies regions in Georgetown, end quote, President David Granger said. Minister of Social Cohesion and Vice Chair of the PNC, Dr. George Norton said the former president was a political icon whose work continues to inspire generations and motivates the government to work tirelessly to build a better nation. The event was attended by members of the Burnham family, former Prime Minister Hamilton Green, ministers of the government and regional representatives. During a recent two-day regional consultation on developing standards for the teaching profession in Latin America and the Caribbean region held in Guyana, Minister of Education, Science and Technology of Antigua and Barbuda, Michael Brown, had an important message to share with parents and guardians. Common entrance results are out. CSAC and CAKE will be announced soon. I know you're anxious about your child's performance. We should never celebrate mediocrity mediocrity, but please also remember your child could be an artist who is less reliant on math, an entre entrepreneur who applies a non-academic value to history and literature, an athlete who nurtures a, a tailored or alternative incorporation of the natural sciences, or a scientist who is yet to fully bask in the effervescence of literature. Congrats if your child scored top marks or received their first choice of secondary school placement. If he or she did not, please don't strip their self-confidence and dignity. Tell them no matter their score or to which school they are assigned, that you love them. Believe that they will do well whichever school he or she is placed or whatever they score. Research shows that your belief in your child's abilities is the greatest ingredient for his or her success. Tell them that because it's the truth. Oftentimes, we as educators ourselves, we put ourselves in a position that we set up children for failure. We will take a short break. Do stay with us. We would like to ask all of our faithful viewers to kindly like and follow Globespan 24-7 Facebook page and subscribe to Globespan 24-7 YouTube channel to receive up-to-date notifications of when we are live. Globespan 24-7 has vacancies for full-time positions such as reporters, newscasters, and news editors. Persons serious about joining a new and dynamic news team are asked to send their application to careers at globespantechnology.com. Globespan 24-7 has some exciting news. As of August 10th, the social and community programs will move from Sunday at 12.30 p.m. to Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Don't miss it. Welcome back. Let's take a look at our regional and international news. 
Internationally, Cabinet Minister Michael Gove says the EU seemed to be refusing to negotiate with the UK over a new Brexit deal. Gove, who is responsible for no deal planning, said he was deeply saddened that Brussels was, in his words, saying, no, we don't want to talk. It comes after the EU said UK demands to move the Irish backstop from Theresa's May deal were unacceptable. Irish Prime Minister Leo Vardark has reiterated that the withdrawal deal, including the backstop, cannot be renegotiated. The European Commission said it was willing to hold further talks should the UK wish to clarify its position. Meanwhile, a group of politicians has started a legal action aimed at preventing Boris Johnson shutting down parliamentary force through a no-deal Brexit. Theresa May's deal has, has been rejected three times by MPs, and as things stand, the UK, UK will leave the EU on the 31st of October when it has agreed to a new one or not. Regionally, U.S. President Donald Trump has imposed sweeping sanctions on the Venezuelan government, freezing its assets in the U.S. and barring transactions with it. This measure is expected to be far from damaging for Venezuela's socialist government than previous sanctions. The move is the latest aimed at increasing pressure on President Nicolas Maduro to step down. The U.S. is one of more than 50 nations that do not recognize Maduro as Venezuela's legitimate president. It has instead given its backing to the head of the National Assembly, Juan Guaido. The move really ramps up the pressure on President Maduro by not only targeting his government's assets in the U.S., but also the individuals, companies and countries doing business with his government. It means that Venezuela will face many of the U.S. restrictions on Cuba, Iran, North Korea, and Syria. And now for a look at what's happening in sport. Guyana's lone table tennis representative was Chelsea Egil, who secured her qualification for the 2019 Games in Guatemala earlier this year. When Egil arrived at the Pan Am Games in Lima, Peru, she was pitted against Pola, Medina of Colombia for the women's singles competition. Medina has a wealth of experience in the sport. The 30-year-old having played at the 2012 Summer Olympics in London and is currently a professional player in Spain. Coming up against such an experienced campaigner, Agile had needed to produce a miraculous performance to advance to the next round of play. Once they had paddles in hand, Agile went down to Medina, 4 to nil. The Guyanese put up a strong fight in two of the games, pushing the scores to 13, but still being unable to get past Medina's experience. She lost 11 to 3, 13 to 11, 11 to 9, and 13 to 11. Germany's Fiona Kolbinger has beaten more than 200 men to become the first woman to win the transcontinental race, cycling more than 2,485 miles across Europe in just over 10 days. The cancer researcher 24 endured thunderstorms, scorching heat, and icy rain in the solar race, which took her from Vargas, Bulgaria, to Brest in northwest France via five other countries. After finishing in a time of 10 days, 2 hours and 48 minutes, Kalbenja says she could have gone harder, adding, I could have slept less. Transcontinental was launched in 2013, beginning in London and finishing in Istanbul. And that has brought us to the end of today's news, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Despite some progress, GCOM immunorators still receiving threats. Government says no evidence of trafficking, smuggling of Haitians. Seven-year-old Monrepo girl sustained severe burns in critical state. Economist says the general economy of Ghana stagnated. And President Burnham remembered for his contribution to education. Thanks for watching Globespan 24-7 News. On behalf of myself, Samuel Sugnadin, the news and technical team. Until next time, do have a great evening. Goodbye for now.